Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for July 10th, 2022, around 2 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for a new tropical system to be forming in the Gulf of Mexico over the next couple of days. Where could it be going and how strong will it get? Well, let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wild look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that the basin is pretty quiet, at least for the time being. We do have a couple of things starting to appear on our radar. First of all, in the Gulf of Mexico, we do have a system that will be draping down from the continental United States, mainly over portions of the southeast U.S. like Mississippi and Alabama. There's a system, there's an area of low pressure on the tail end of this very long extended cold front here that will be kind of dipping southward into the Gulf of Mexico over the next couple of days where some additional development into a tropical system is possible after that. Down here in the deep tropics, all is pretty quiet right now, but signals are starting to increase for some type of activity starting really in late July and continuing into August. The signs are certainly pointing towards increased favorability there, but for right now, all is pretty quiet. So in the Atlantic Basin, here's the tropical weather outlook from 8 a.m. this morning. This still stands as of 2 p.m. this afternoon. Nothing has changed. Again, an area of low pressure right now on the tail end of a cold front around the Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia borders here. This will be dipping towards the southwest over the next couple of days where development uh, after that time could occur, but it will be slow if any development does occur. Uh, now, this could definitely bring some in, uh, elevated impacts in terms of rainfall to portions of the Gulf Coast states, including the Florida Peninsula, Panhandle, and portions of Louisiana, Alabama, and coastal Mississippi. So let's jump straight into everything, taking a wild look across the, the tropical Atlantic on the GFS forecast here. This is the 850 millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. So again, this is kind of what we want to see right here if we're looking at a tropical system. Now, this is a mid-latitude cyclone, but that's kind of the area we would want to look for or the bundling of energy down here if we were to see a tropical system. Now, if we kind of move forward in time, we notice here on the 12Z GFS, if we take a look at that vorticity, we notice how there is actually a system that begins to try to consolidate down here towards the southeast of Louisiana. And this kind of just meanders around for the next couple of days before generally moving back over land. So certainly providing some very heavy rainfall possibilities to portions of the Gulf Coast. Again, if we look here at the precipital water, we notice, or the relative humidity rather, we notice that there will be a stretch of more moist air this air will kind of be really spread over a wide area. And um, it could definitely bring some flooding rainfall, maybe some gusty winds from time to time. But you can kind of see that just fire hose of moisture being pumped in across the southeast U.S. And that certainly remains a very distinct possibility. I don't really see a major wind threat with this for now, uh, but certainly could have some heavy rainfall associated with that. If you look here at the upper level wind environment, this is the GFS forecast, the 200 millibar wind pattern. So this is looking at about 39,000 feet above the ground. We notice that again, right now, we don't really have a super hostile wind environment. There is a little bit of shear, especially on the backside here of kind of this, this upper level anticyclone and then this upper level low right here. Uh, but generally speaking, this will kind of dip down into a little bit more favorable conditions and we can kind of see that at least the shear does decrease a little bit and we kind of end up with a little bit of what appears to kind of be this upper level low right here. And so there is going to be some shear that will be imparted on whatever tries to develop in here and then kind of see this monster upper level low over the Dominican Republic. But generally speaking, shear will remain at least modest. So I'm not expecting any significant development at this time. If you look at the European forecast, this is the European ensembles here. We, we're looking at the 0Z run, so this is the overnight runs here. And we notice that on the Euro, there actually is some enhanced uh, tropical cyclone tracks through here. Some of them take it into Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, or Florida. So really anywhere across the Gulf Coast needs to be monitoring the progress of the system. I'm not expecting anything that significant at this time, but certainly could see a rainmaker uh, and we're looking at the time frame here, probably somewhere any between uh, the 15th and going into the 18th and potentially even the 19th. So 
uh, at least about for the next about three days, everything seems to be pretty quiet. And then after that, it seems like that we could have some activity to talk about here in the Gulf of Mexico, but I, I'm just not really seeing any uh, thing that really points a, a strong system right now. Now, one of the things that does go in its favor for development, well, the sea surface temperatures here are pretty warm across the entire Gulf of Mexico. We noticed that most of the basin right now is running with water temperatures of just about 28 to 30 Celsius. And we have this pocket of 31 Celsius up here, uh, right across the shelf waters just south of Louisiana. And this certainly paves the way for some pretty substantial uh, you know, convective instability down there. And that will allow for thunderstorms to generate and potentially lead to surface pressure falls and a cyclone developing. If you look at the upper ocean heat content, we also know that that is also pretty high. We notice that there's a pretty good amount here, especially down here across the Caribbean. And that will be important for any seasonal storms that decide to come in here, especially during August, September, and October. And then, of course, out here in the Gulf of Mexico, that one spot right here, that's definitely a little concerning if we have any storms to trying to take advantage of that, especially later in the season. And, of course, out here in the Gulf Stream and near Florida and the Carolinas, that's certainly also concerning. Uh, but generally speaking, across Mississippi, Alabama, and Louisiana, there is sufficient upper ocean heat content out here to support genesis of a tropical cyclone. So it would not surprise me in the least if that were to happen uh, but again, I'm not really expecting anything that significant. Again, the time frame seems to be anywhere between the 15th and the 18th uh, for development and impacts across portions of the Gulf Coast. Looking in the long term here, this is the GFS Ensemble forecast here. This is looking at the precipital water. So just really looking at how moist or dry the atmosphere seems to be based on the model. Now, we notice that across the main development region right now, it is pretty dry. There is some moist air that is generally sitting near the Cabo Verde Islands associated with the tropical wave. But overall, it seems like that the environment will be pretty dry and stable through the 26th. Now, this is very normal because this is July. And I want to caution because I've seen some posts and, and whatnot about people saying, that, oh, because we've had a very quiet, you know, July that, you know, the season is basically canceled, whatever. I'm here to say that's not really the case. July activity is pretty null anyway. And so you don't really have significant July systems, especially in the deep tropics. It just almost never happens except for 2005, really. But it's only happened a handful of years. And even in the MDR in 2017, I think we only had one system that was a tropical depression. So I'm not really too worried about that. Now, if this was like August 20th, that would be a different story. But I'm just not seeing any indications right now that go to suggest that the season is, you know, going that this, any of the seasonal predictions are, are too high or whatever. So we'll continue to monitor things. But I feel uh, pretty good, at least for the next couple of days, especially in the deep tropics, that there's nothing to worry about. But in the Gulf of Mexico, we'll have to continue to monitor the progress of that system uh, for potential land impacts to somewhere across the Gulf Coast, including portions of Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, or Florida. Very wide range. We just don't really know yet. So we'll continue to check back on the forecast, and I hope you will do the same. All right. So that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I will talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.